This conference will now be recorded. Okay, on her way. Uh, she have a time estimate on that. Okay. I don't want to start without her on her first meeting. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with us, but appreciate you being here. Wow. This is all very What's that? This is all very awkward now until uh, we mentioned that. <laughs> is there anything we can do uh, in the meantime? I think. You know, I don't know. I kind of like her to do the whole thing, I suppose, for a person. So maybe let's just uh, pause for a few minutes. Sorry for the false start. All right, yeah. Let's. Let's take a 10-minute break. Anybody have right there? Sure. All right. So why are we Come. electing a new chair? Are you leaving us or something? It's just time. It's been uh, it's been years. Almost two are years. Are you giving me it's it's me not you speech? It's in our, we put it in our uh, procedures that we're supposed to do every two years. Well, it has been almost two years, huh? Mm -hmm. But there's no reason why you couldn't do it. I mean, it's not term limited, right? Not as far as I know. Yeah. Um, Just, but especially with a full full roster for the first time in quite a while, it seemed like good timing. No problem. Appreciate you right. being here. Um, let's uh, try call and roll again. Here. 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 Commissioner Shattuck to the Planning Commission. Thanks so much for being here. We Thank are you so very much. I'm so sorry to everybody that I'm hey. late. No sweats. 
not a problem at all. We are glad to have you. Um, first up on our agenda is election of uh, chair. Um, now this says acting chair. Is that okay? Okay, fantastic. That's fine. Ah, okay. All right. Do we have? How do we do that? Sorry, we only do this once every two years, so um, I'm gonna gonna flub it a little bit. I'm sure. Okay. I. I don't know how to do this. I think we that's just uh, I'll open it for nominations for chair. I nominate Tell Jensen for chair. <laughs> I second that. Okay. Bang that gavel. We've got, Please do so. We have a motion and second for Tell Jensen chair. Any other nominations? Well, I think we'd have a constitutional crisis if I turned that down. So um, I will accept the nomination and I think we need to vote on that. So, would you call the vote, please? Yeah. A resounding yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, that's fine. Um, moving right along, thanks everyone, that was quick, very efficient, um, is election of the vice chair. So I will open the floor for nominations for vice chair of the Woodland County Commission. Oh, a little bit. A little bit shyer about this, are we? <laughs> so I will nom I will nominate Brian Madden. I'll second that nomination. I did you what? Okay. Uh, Brian Matson has been nominated and seconded. Are there any other nominations for vice chair of the planning commission? This you could make it interesting. Okay. All right, uh, we have one nominee for vice chair. Uh, will you accept that nomination? I do. Okay, uh, in that case, can uh, clerk call the roll for voting on Brian Matson as the vice chair of the Women's Planning Commission? Yes. Brian Matson? Yes. Ben Watt? Yes. Kelly Yes. Yes. All right, fantastic. Yes. So now that you have gone through that exercise for then so long, can I make a suggestion that you make a motion to set the time for us to become the agenda? Would it be January or July or Okay. Um that's a good question. What are can we say that till next month? Because I want to think about um when terms end and begin and such and try to line it up so it makes sense there. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Maybe we can get it out of there. Okay. All right. But somebody, uh, so typically we do in our, I believe in our uh, procedures, we have two years. Does that sound right? Uh, for the chair? Yes. 
Annual? Okay. That sounds great. Um, That's the way I remember it. Yeah. Okay. In that case, um, could I request a motion that we have uh, officer election again on next year's January meeting? I second that. I'm asking you to make the motion. Oh, <laughs> I move that we have another election in January for chair and vice chair. I second that. Okay, fantastic. Motion's been made and seconded. Any uh, discussion about that? All right. Um, anyone opposed to electing officers in January of 2022 meeting? 23. 23 meeting. 2023 meeting. Thank you. Um, hearing uh, no one against, the motion passes, and we will have an election again in January. Fantastic. Um, next up, looks like we have a presentation. Is this? No, sorry. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Uh, citizen communications for items that are not on the agenda. Does anyone, uh, would anyone present like to speak about an item that's not on the agenda? Anything else? Just can't be on the agenda. All right. Uh, do we have anybody coming virtually? I don't see any. All right. Next up then is approval of the agenda. I move that we approve the agenda. Okay. I second it. All right. Motion has been made by Brian Matson, seconded by Sharon Watt to approve the agenda as written. Any discussion about that? No? All right. Anyone opposed to approving the agenda as written? Okay, motion carries. Moving on to approving the minutes from the April 21st, 2022 meeting. Is that really the last time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I approve that we approve the minutes as written. I second that. Okay. Motion's been made by Brian Matson, seconded by Shauna Gawthorne to approve the April 21st, 2022 minutes. Anything to talk about there? All right. Anyone opposed to approving the minutes as written? All right. Motion carries. Next up, we have public hearing for ordinance. What is this? 1505 item ZTA-22-003 is reconsideration of code amendments for the development of residential units within the highway commercial zoning district. Um, I need to ask if any member of the planning commission has had any ex parte communication or has any conflicts of interest to declare on this agenda item. All right, fantastic. Um, and I think we have a staff presentation. Thank you very much. Um, so this is the issue that is coming back to the planning commission. For those of you who are familiar with this, these are wrestling with commercial zoning and the possibility of having residential development to commercial zoning. Our downtown commercial store or downtown business district allow for residential to be located above commercial uses. And um, when we made a minor change to our code back in 2019, we accidentally included some language that allowed for the highway commercial district to have uh, residential above commercial uses. And the way it's structured, it allowed for some funky interpretations proposed that allowed for some high density residential to be built above the commercial ground floor and the planning commission adopted more 
volume that's presented of discussing new applications for these types of use and um, the planning commission went through the exercise of looking at some code language for ordinance 1505 and we recommended approval for the language after that process and uh, it included a three story commercial uses above uh, or sorry, three stories of residential uses above commercial use. And um, that recommendation was forwarded to the Planning and the City Council. And a member of the City Council raised the question in that is um, they were unsure that that was the intent of the usual allowance of residential or commercial which was originally thought to be one story above one commercial. And they thought it might have been a little excessive for us to go to three over one without a more in-depth process and discussion. And so they remanded it back to the planning commission and had a work session at the last meeting. And um, what you have in front of you today is a very colorful and excellent presentation because uh, essentially, the question is: Should it be three stories of commercial, three stories of residential above one commercial? Should it be two above one? Should it be one above one? Or should we just change the code to not, not allow residential to be having a commercial zone, and do we have a chance to really work on some in-depth mixed-use coding? And um, so what you have before you is the original version of 1505 with the modifications in yellow. Those are the pages of what you would need to change. They literally did two or three words to make it two over one. The blue version is the exact same 1505 modified to one over one. And then the violet or the purple for you is the language change is it would take to eliminate highly commercial residential uses and so we have a chance to really think this out and do a larger effort. And so that is essentially the presentation I have for you today, those are the four versions that we have before you today. So one thing we didn't do last time that I would like to do is I'd like to put Brian on the spot. And I would like to ask him, given that he's our county planner, do you remember the mixed group process that they went through? If this was our county, would it be as simple as we made it, or would it be a lot more drawn out in the involvement process? And maybe that might support whether or not the code was <clears throat> I don't. Uh, I don't think I was a planner when they did the outreach for that. I've reviewed mixed use stuff, and it's complex, right? Um, but uh, I don't remember the outreach section portion. I, it was there when I got there, so to speak. And I point that out because Clark County has an entire department that does not have a follow-up. They don't have a separate department for no reason. Long drawn out. Are you saying we don't have a dedicated long range planning department? Woodland, Woodland well, doesn't have that? They have a separate dedicated long range planning department. Right. Just joking around. Um, I have one quick question before I uh, open up to the rest of the commission. Um, just clarifying that what we are talking about today is just for highway commercial. This is not for the downtown. We're not changing the downtown commercial. Yeah, just for the highway commercial. All right, fantastic. Thanks for pointing that out. Okay. Got that out of the way. Um, have any uh, questions for Travis? We'll have a discussion, further discussion in a moment. Uh, just want to see if you have any quick questions for Travis before I open public testimony. Um, what are the advantages of having residential capabilities in the in this zone. The idea was in the downtown commercial core is that they want to establish aesthetic 
that we have down there on Davidson, where you have tuition teachers that have multiple stories, because it encourages it to be, and you're more likely to be able to fill the residential area with the support commercial buildings. And the idea is once you get more people in the downtown, then you will get traditional shops opening up that are restaurants, that are stores, with more people down there. So obviously, the high rate commercial issue of a completely unintended mistake. There was no intent for our highly commercial to start incorporating the residential. So the pluses you get for the, the downtown don't necessarily apply to the. That's correct. Yeah. And in the downtown, there are limiting factors, whereas in the highway commercial district, as uh, one of you this discussion, but there was no intent to do that. There was no, there was no facade going up there to make it sure we could get in the store. So we theoretically. There are no side doors that come up. Okay. Blind to see the All right. Thanks, Travis. Any other uh, quick questions? Again, we'll have lots of time for more questions and talk amongst ourselves in a couple minutes. But any last clarification from Travis? Okay. I'm going to um, open public testimony then. Um, so at this time, I ask that any member of the public who wishes to give testimony on this item, please approach the microphone and state your name and address. Anybody? All right. Okay. Um, we have anybody online yet? Okay, no staff response, no final rebuttal. In that case, I'm going to close public testimony and move on to our deliberation. So, initial thoughts. I got, I have some idea of sharing lots of thoughts this morning. But, uh, <clears throat> so, what else? I see it as two competing interests. You want density, right? You know, the, the best way to approach the affordable housing problem is to create more housing, right? So you have density is good for that end, but then you don't want it to take the place of valuable com commercial space. If they were to put viable commercial uses on the ground floor instead of a parking garage, which they're claiming is commercial, maybe it wouldn't be such an impact. Um, because these are competing interests that are, you know, in the public interest, I, I lean to saying no residential until they do some sort of mixed use outreach that more people can participate and decide on the outcome. Okay. I agree. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I agree. Okay. Um, all right, just to be a little bit of devil's advocate here, I I think my 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 feeling is that you know if we limit it to a one to one ratio. Um, nobody's going to build an empty, you know, commercial shell space with housing on, on top, you know, with no intention of filling that commercial space. So I think maybe that, you know, de facto does kind of limit things that we're trying to avoid, but does allow potentially some, you know, small projects, people dipping their toe in to see if it works around here, um, you know, the advantages, the advantages I see are regardless of where it is downtown, it's, you know, it, it's got that kind of, you know, historic traditional downtown, but wherever you do this sort of thing, you're putting people and services in close proximity to each other. And that um, eases the, the load on our infrastructure, um, makes our infrastructure mm -hmm. more efficient. Um, and you know has has advantages of that general nature. So um, I definitely agree that a bigger a bigger discussion needs to happen before we go full bore down this path. Um, but I wonder if we can maybe 
I do. I agree with everything you said. It, it might be that we do settle on one story above commercial, but I think the public should weigh in on that. Mm -hmm. Public hearing. Right you'd, ra you'd rather have a four-hour meeting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any other? Seems like we have maybe reached consensus on this. Any uh, any other thoughts? No discussion. No discussion. Maybe. Okay. All right. I mean, if at least if we open it up for the discussion, if people don't participate, then at least it was open for it, and then. Then I would feel less controlling to make the decision myself, at least if there was the opportunity for the public to weigh in what they really want. Okay, staff, you ready for that? That outreach project? All right. Um, great. Could I think? Uh, I think we're ready for a motion on this. Um, I am at least. I move that we we choose no residential until an appropriate outreach uh, can be created to make the decision after further public input. I second that. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to strike residential mixed use from the commercial, the highway, the highway commercials. Yeah. I should have specified that. All right, fantastic. Any more discussion on the last looks? Okay, let's uh, call a vote then. Uh, no. Brian Nessick? Yes. And Karen Watt? Yes. 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 All right, motion carries. Uh, so we'll close public hearing for ZTA-22-003. Excellent work. Moving right along, we have another public hearing. And that is item 22-00, ZTA-22-005. This is wheeled all-terrain vehicle code amendment. Um, again, I'm going to ask if anyone has any ex parte communication or conflicts of interest. No. 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 All right. Outstanding. Um, then we have a staff presentation on this one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so just to give a little bit of background. We did have a workshop on this code that was performed on April 21st, 2022, at our last meeting. So, this will be in public hearing for, for this code session. Uh, the plan is moving forward is could the presentation provide to the committee? Recommendation to move forward with this code to have it go to the council likely in early July. From there, this code was put together in order to allow the use of real all train vehicles within and on within the city code. It was brought forward because a number of community members. I asked for us as surrounding jurisdictions as well as California itself and say of Washington have programs that do allow for the study uh, of the within within the code. So during that workshop you gave a you gave me a number of suggestions. Moving forward, one of which was to ensure that within this code it stated specifically that insurance was required, which I added to the, to the code language. It was seriously required through state law, as is now in here. However, by adding this in, it would make sure that 
it would make the it is laid out within a local code and prevent some of these potential confusion. We also asked me to look into whether the fire flag are the higher visibility aspects to be to be utilized within within uh, within the city limits. Now, through my research, what I found, and if this is something that you want to move forward, it is completely legal. You can make recommendations with that as an addition. However, already all those legal WACDs do require funds and your headlights, training signals, as well as foreign and other safety precautions. And this would not match up, meet up with surrounding jurisdiction. So, my thinking. And as I said, you can suggest the address in, it would be rather simple. But my thinking is that we want to make it relatively easy for people from Howard County to come into Woodland and vice versa, and not require specific additional safety measures unless they're actually necessary. Many of the WHDs that would be allowed by this code. Uh, drive and as I said, all the parts have high visibility um, lights and other safety requirements. So, the other part that was opinion that was expressed was that the WHD zone should be expanded. And I believe the last page of the packet, you can have a map I just put together quickly. This is not a final island map. However, it does. Indicate the areas in which WACD would be allowed by the code. Uh, I primarily focus on residential and commercial areas and ensuring people could close drug city. There are a couple of specific carve outs. Oh, and the limit is any road within the city has a speed limit under 35 miles per hour. I believe. We do not have any roads outside of I 5, which obviously is not a WACD would not be allowed for within the city to see the code that, but it is putting the code to the same in the future that does come up. That is very consistent with other codes that we did regarding this topic as well. Um, so this cut up with the Atlantic and Pacific Avenue. Um, there was pushback. I'm allowing these just because they serve as essentially extended on and off ramps on I 5. And the volume of traffic going back and forth is, is really quite high. It is also believed that it does not, it would not have a huge impact in most places, can be, most uh, of the cities can be utilized without the inclusion. I also thought that folks are happy. Between George and Sixth Street, as that is an established cut route. And just based on the number of large trucks that go up and down that street every day in order to go down the limitations of Davis Street, it just seems the kids being intelligent when discussing with other staff members so would have to drop down this check definitely saves the friend and we'll be proud of that. As well as Keegan and Guild Road for similar reasons based on the bus traffic and the destiny of those roads. I believe that is really the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask them. All right. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. Um, I have one quick question, and this might actually be. It, it, does Clark County also allow ATVs? Not, not to my knowledge. I do not believe so. Okay. If so, it might be just a big There's a couple of towns that battleground have yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, but we don't share a border with any of them, so that's. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Stevenson is not in Clark County. All right. Um, 
Fantastic. Any other questions for David before we? David, just to, to clarify, if I understood you correctly, um, the the already existing ordinances that allow this in Cowlitz County don't require the flag. Is that what I? No, my layman's understanding of the flag was mainly because of dunes and the elevation changes to, to see you right it's not not a flat surface type of thing so yeah. makes sense and i think they look sporty <laughs> they do Just put one on your bike it's a good idea sure. Uh, David, you did say that you eliminated the truck route. Yeah. It's you can't really see it, but, yeah. Yeah. but it, it is. There's no route. of the WATB shall wear DOT approved helmets unless it's originally equipment manufacturing rollover protection system. Is there an age on that? Okay. Um, I believe you have to do that. Okay. It's a driver's license requirement. Yeah. Is that you have to have a driver's license. So it's you can be in one of those on the street. Yeah, what I wanted to hear. That's what I wanted to hear. So just to operate one though, or to be in to it. To be in it. To be in it. So if there's children in it, they have to be in a car seat. Do they need to wear a helmet? Yes. 16 and under, no matter if they're driving or not. But I want to be here. So, I think that we must be the more than safe and we have to save life to specify a lot of other things. So, no matter if it's a rollover protection system or not, they still have to wear a helmet. Okay. Uh, just clear, make sure I'm understanding this correctly. The city is the applicant in this case, right? We don't have a, no, yeah. okay. okay. Um, any last quick questions for David? Okay. In that case, I'm going to open public testimony now. Um, so. Anyone who would like to speak for or against uh, this particular agenda item, uh, would you please approach the, uh, come up to the lectern here and tell us your name and address, and I'm going to give you a five minute. I'm Mike Peterson. I'm the Green Lake State. I was the one that brought this to the city council. Earlier this year, and uh, pretty much uh, David's been handling this pretty good, bringing it, bring it through, and uh, it, uh, it it comes down from the state through the department of licensing to the county level. But I think it's something that the city and the residents can enjoy, and uh, it's uh, you know our group and uh, the people that enjoy these things. Uh, we take safety. Really serious. Um, we just work on people say, I think this will allow a uh, 
an alternative way to get around, you know, to say, and, uh, utilize our machines and uh, to have family time and connect with other cities. Uh, I do have a question about the, the zoning map that the data is laid out. It's done a great job doing that. Uh, we're trying to keep us safe and everybody else. And I, you know, I can see that. That's, that's a good thing. He's, he's eliminated the, the front roads, um, the heavy traffic areas. I think, you know, it's probably a good start. Uh, the truck route part, I, I'd like to see that connected. I mean, it's I rode in Havasu where there's, they don't have too many restrictions there. They even let us drive on the mile an hour road. And uh, all the semis and uh, vehicles like that, uh, they see us. We run our headlights, we have uh, signals, and we've got horns. And, uh, you know, I'm just as courteous and mad as I am in my own car. If I see a truck that's turning or something, I stop, just like everybody else, let the guy go. Let him do his thing. And uh, I would like to see that that connector on those are beacon and dial. And but leave the leave the front each rows if we could have just like the for a start. I think that's a good start. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right. Anyone else wanna speak in favor or opposed to this agenda? I think it's a great idea. All right. You can say more if you want. So well. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Fantastic. Appreciate you now repeating each other. That's helpful. Okay. Um, make sure we don't have anybody online. It's just us, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come on up. Give you more than a minute, give you five minutes. Uh, my name is Trevor Beatty. I live at 9530 Old Pacific Highway, Great Woodland. Um, three days my business partner with Addiction Tower, of course, broke our cost from the Indian School there. And uh, the street rehab declaration that you do for the inspection for the state is pretty elaborate. Make sure that all the safety requirements are there um, with the clickers and the mirrors and you know, everything a car would have to be on the street. It's, it's definitely on par with that. And so I just want to let you guys know that but it's definitely every vehicle that has on those roads like inspected one of the time. So you're doing you actually do the inspections for the state? Yep. Okay, interesting. All right, good know that. So do you have to turn in the certificate and everything like that, sign off on it? Yeah, so we fill it out and on there we have to put like a business license and all the stuff to mm -hmm. sign it and it goes to the checklist. And then we do that to the customer that we'll take it from the license and and then it also ah. is from us. And with that, that's how they would have taken on this. Okay. Okay. So you're on the hook if somebody does something stupid. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, we got to pay attention. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Trevor. All right. Last chance. Don't be shy. This is democracy in action here. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close public testimony then and move on to the commission deliberation. I certainly don't want to be Captain Bring Down. I have no problem with it. I actually don't even have a problem with Mr. Peterson's suggestion of opening it up the the truck, not not the frontage roads, but the other the other truck routes. Yeah. I I think that everyone's concerned about the safety, but no more than you worry about any other driver whenever you drive anywhere. You know, I I I would imagine that the these ATV riders are probably even more vigilant than your average person in their car, right? Just because, but that's just what I think. Okay, thanks, man. Any other thoughts? Deliberations? Anything in between a car and a motorcycle. That's true. Right. Chair? Nope. All right. Okay. I guess my only my only thought was is kind of superseded by what you folks have said, and that's you know Caples and Caples is kind of orphaned if we we close off Pekin, um, and then 
I wondered how folks who live on Bozarth would they have to ride on the sidewalk to get into the? I live on Bozarth. There's sidewalks on both sides of the street. The ATVs won't be riding on the sidewalk because that wouldn't be allowed. All right. Thank you, Brian. Um, all right. In that case, I think, uh, again, I'm hearing some consensus. So I think we're ready for a motion. I just, I don't know how the rest of the commissioners feel about opening up the couple more streets as as requested but i'll go ahead and start i move that we uh, accept staff's recommendation for allowing the wheeled altering vehicles uh with with the modification that we open up the two streets that mr peterson requested which are we should say i'm sorry pekin and uh what was the other one sir pekin guild and bozart pekin guild and bozart Thank you. I second that. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Any uh, discussion about that? Okay. Let's call a vote then. Yes. Brian Russell? Yep. Dan Watt? Yes. Tom Yes. 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 All right. Fantastic. Moving right along. We might get to see some fireworks. Maybe. I don't yeah, thanks for coming out, folks. Appreciate you getting involved. Have fun out there. All right. <laughs> Tell all your friends to come to planning commission meetings. <laughs> you know, we, we randomly have snacks. <laughs> we don't. We don't ever have snacks. You never know when it's going to happen, so you have to come to every meeting. Okay. All right, so public hearing for CTA-22005 is now closed. Moving on to ZTA-22004 special event permanent code amendment. Again, do we have any ex parte communication or conflicts of interest? No. no. Fantastic. How about a staff presentation? Thank you. 
question it's just for my own clarification my the my understanding please correct me if i'm wrong that this was brought forth by the clerk to help them do their job better but there was pushback from public works is that correct and but public works isn't public, public isn't here to present their case i guess public works has obviously held some Decision making power over the So, obviously, that's something that I we do understand is important to them, and obviously, they want to make sure that the good is going to be Would, would you know, utility work in the right of way that would still require one of their right of way permits, right? Yeah. It doesn't supplant that, right? It's just an additional no, layer it's, for it's okay. an additional layer. Okay, what we're talking about is uh, if you're using a site right now, if you were. This this does away with the two permits. Well, may I add a Please. So I'm the one that started the process. Okay. Um, so what was going on is the special event permit. There was numerous forms that people had to fill out, and what the goal originally was is to create one form that they could fill out. We quickly learned we didn't have a code. So this is where the code came about. So we had some kind of guidance to figure out what would be allowed for a special event and who was not. Um, then we got into discussion later on after we had our workshop about right away for the street. Prior to all of this, we had just a street closure form that someone had to fill out on top of a special event form that they had to fill out on top of other forms they had to fill out. So Public Works came in and said, well, they need a right-of-way permit. Well, if you look at the right-of-way permit itself, it states if you're doing work or placing an item in the right-of-way. It doesn't specify, it's mostly for construction in the right-of-way. It does not cover block parts. Gotcha. So I would still not, I'm still in the favor of doing just the special event application. 
taking a look and seeing if there was one that's really going to get it there that missed about three closures, which is what we had prior to, it's just now one four. Mm -hmm. Versus having it as a right away. If you have to have a, a bluff party fill out a right away, then you have to change the right away uh, permit to adapt to that. The other concern was is the approval process when you get to the management team is it be held at the public public works office level versus the management team with okay. for a special event, but it's supposed to go to the management team. I think there's a pretty sharp delineation in my mind between you know historic work in the right of way and just closing it for an event. I think they're apples and oranges. I don't I'm fine with separating the separate event permit for just closing it when you're not doing anything to it. Just another good example of how we think of this in terms of uh, historically when a special event like five thirty comes along, our code says kiosk require an administrative permit. So if you're going to do a snow cone kiosk, it requires an administrative permit. But since it's part of plan Thursday and they may have 40 vendors, it's unrealistic for us to do administrative condition permits every vendor. We can't be having snow cone anarchy out there. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So we have traditionally since I got here before I realized there was no code governing this at all, I had taken the position that because the special event permit was considered by the city council and it was approved, that it was kind of the umbrella approval for that event. And part of our thinking when we originally drafted the code, and that is if Hunter's Day plan closed the road for two hours for the animal free, and on Saturday we closed for six hours for vendors, and on Sunday the crew then just closed for three hours on the vendor or on for the crew team. Then theoretically, we were thinking, well, that's a special event, and we don't necessarily think it makes sense for them to do three road closure permits. But public works has taken the position that yes, each one should be considered in and of itself. And we're kind of wrestling with that internal part of the reason why it had been hoping for your input as to whether or not you think more like the district permit or is it more like the right of way closure to be When I think the right of way, I think of somebody cutting into the road and digging in the trench, putting it back, mm -hmm. and remaking it. Whereas public works seems to have any kind of road that's closed. Do we have to do right away and is it part of this or that? Do we want to treat it as a special event or do we want to keep running one of those street closures to a separate concept? Okay. And the code uh, code on that permit does specifically call out those that have been structured activities. Okay. Questions, great discussion. I'm just uh, to uh, cross it to you here. I'm going to open public testimony. Um, I'm just going to leave it open just in case somebody jumps on. I don't think they will, but you know. Um, 
All right. Proceed. Keep talking. I support the, the, the treating them differently. And if you want to discuss it more, we can, or I can just go I guess right to making the motion saying so. I have okay, I have a quick, it's a, are, we, are we thinking of anything besides the block party or is that kind of like, I mean, I guess, you know, you talked about the, the block parties, parades, car shows. Okay. Um, mainly just for like general public use. Okay. So I, I mean, I, it seems like, you know, public works should be made aware of road closures so that they can object if they have a reason to. Yeah, it goes to Nancy Cooper review. The debate, um, public works is part of that review. So Tracy will see it. Okay. And fire, all the managers are reviewed. Okay. I, I yeah, I'm, I'm personally of the opinion that we should make block, block parties really easy to do because I think they're great. I agree. I agree. Um, I don't know if we could make it even easier than we're proposing here, but maybe that's maybe that's going too far. Um, maybe maybe just add a, like a block party to our table of event information here. Would that be pretty easy? Yeah, I had something that came up. Uh, people didn't really know what the block party was. Yeah. Um, How about the, just turn this out here, 60 days prior to the event, like, do we want to make block parties, you know, maybe a little more spontaneous than 60 days in advance? Maybe, maybe two weeks in advance. Are you saying just for block parties? Or not I was thinking just for block parties. Yeah. Because I like it. Because they're closing the street, they're dancing, there's... If it has to be routed around to different managers, that all builds time that into it. Okay. Some people on vacation. And I know how I work, I work for a bureaucracy. Just man. throwing it out there. It moves, it moves right. at the speed of government. Spontaneity right? is outlawed. Not allowed to be spontaneous. Okay. Okay. So I want to add something on a different tab. Um, so the you know the application that you have here at the end looks pretty straightforward. And, and fine. You have 12 pages of, of here. <laughs> Does somebody who want, who is applying for an event, do they have to read through these 12 pages? Do they, uh, do they is, are they given those 12 pages? Um, that is part of the reading the application is so clear that it's There's an exam on it. Amanda is going to take this application and I think it's very important. Yeah, the application yeah. is fine. It's, because it's, we want people to it's just there's a whole lot of verbiage here. Yeah, I think that's the sausage. Yeah, that's that's making the sausage we're trying to scrape. Sure. And on the special event page, so people can access it in case they want more information from that. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of a lot of what's in this is stuff that most events. Anybody who's 
gonna fill one of these out. Can I have a conversation? Somebody in the office. Mm -hmm. Trust me, nobody ever fills out the entire application of anything. They just don't. <laughs> it's, it's just that's just the nature of applications in general. All right. Okay. Any more thoughts? I'm gonna close the public testimony. Seems like we're done deliberating. So I would like a motion. I move that we support staff's recommendation and implement the special events permit code amendment. I second that. Um, Motion's been made and seconded. David, I heard none. No, no. I, I was just suggesting you might want to uh, specify a little bit of wedding bonds and separate. No. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. I so, withdraw that motion and I'll modify it. Say it that way. I'll I'll allow that. Okay. I move that we support the special event code amendment uh, with the understanding that it won't require a, du a duplicative right away permit unless it triggers construction of the right away of some way triggers the right away permit. But I see no need to duplicate the approvals i second that okay motion has been made and seconded anew and that that's clear you have clear direction from us on that that makes sense all right any, any last discussion let's call a vote yes Brian yep Sarah Watt. yes yes okay. all right Motion case. Nice work. I'm going to close public hearing for ZTA 22004. That's all the public hearings. I think that might be all the meeting. Do we have any, any more staff reporting to do? What do you do all day then, Travis? He goes on vacation. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. So, oh, okay. Sorry, yeah, I'm not going to be next. But, so, Stoney Russell has accepted the position as Toby Kerr. And um, we hired a new employee for the front counter for the picture. Was there money in the budget for a full time code enforcement office, or is there really no need? Is it still part time? I can't. I can't imagine there's need for a full time. Find a way to fill it out. It's good for them. Upset homeowners and contractors. I'm sure you'll have a ton of applicants. Um, all right. Anything else? Can I give you a library update? Please. Please do. Okay. So the um, the district board will be holding a meeting at the end of June to talk uh, to talk about surplusing the property so that the uh, for the city to buy it. However, that's working out. Um, but they're planning to kick a uh, kickoff meeting for the design development portion of the project for July 7. Um, let's see. Once we get started, we will meet every other week for the duration. Construction should start next spring, and I remain hopeful that we may still do some site work this fall. This is from the library director, the district director. Next spring. Well, that's exciting. Yes, it seems like is, progress. Finally. Yeah. That'd be nice. Any from the city side, any 
Do we know anything about that property? Um, All right, fantastic. Thanks. Any uh, any other commissioners? No? All right. Well, um, I want to welcome our new commissioner, Slavik, again. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy to have a full roster at last. Um, and also, thanks for trusting me as chair. I really appreciate it. It's something I uh, take seriously, and I know it's mostly that you all just don't want to do it. No, but you but did I, such a good job. <laughs> you do a good job. I appreciate it. Well, okay. That's You're very optimistic on lots of things. That's very generous of all of you. Um, but thanks. I appreciate it. Um, and thanks a lot, staff, for all your work. Taking the time. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Let's adjourn. That was pretty smooth. That was a question. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's, that's geez, I know, right? We can start a little, a little, a little bit later. Yeah, I use that. We can start three.